Come out with us and play Love Your London. Have a banana. In this episode of Love Your London, we continue on our journey around Balham by venturing down Upper Dooting Road, a place filled with amazing Indian restaurants and shops. We learn all about Sikhism, taste some Eritrean beer, check out where a snooker legend learned his trade, and even go picking cherries. Hello, welcome back. We're back in, uh, well, we're back in Tooting, as promised. Uh, the last episode, um, as I'm sure you remember, we went to, we, we, went, we were here but really in Tooting Beck Station and we promise you that in the next episode we will be exploring the exciting Upper Tooting Road. As, as, as I said before, this is the A24, the old Roman road, Stain Road. Now they do say that all roads lead to Rome, uh, but actually this particular road leads to much more far away and exotic places, at least as far as culinary and olfactory um, aspects are concerned because this is the curry mile the tooting corridor as it's also known so many curry restaurants all coming from the south indian subcontinent restaurants from pakistan bangladesh india and sri lanka are all represented here but it's not just that area we have um, restaurants from greece from lebanon from from the basque country uh, from uh, from uh, so that's probably off my stride now. I had a long list of about twenty different countries to tell you there. We're going to start off with breakfast because it's the start of the day. It's going to be a long day. This is going to be split into three or four episodes um, because we're not only just eating here, but we're going to start off with breakfast. And the breakfast we're going to have is a desi breakfast. Desi, D-E-S-I. So the word Desi, um, it, it means sort of the people. Um, <coughs> and it refers to people from the Indian subcontinent, um, but especially refers to their diaspora. Um, so we're going to have a Desi breakfast. What we're going to have, we're going to have chai. Chai is tea. Um, and here's a funny little graphic on your screen. You've probably seen it on your social media, showing how half the world uh, uses the word tea um, for their language, for their, for, their lang for their variation of the drink, and the other half uses the word chai. Back in the 70s, uh, well, obviously before the 70s, but especially, especially you'll see it on 70s sitcoms and stuff, uh, the working classes, uh, to, to, call, to, to give them that, that, that name, uh, would often be depicted referring to tea as cha, cup of cha, please. Um, you'd hear it in Reginald Perrin, you'd hear it in lots of different um, series. Um, it, that also comes from that same root. So in, in sort of like older English, and it still exists in certain geographical parts of this island, uh, but it was much more common supposedly in the 60s and 70s, uh, cha would be used for tea. Uh, now, chai in the UK and, uh, and, and abroad, it's not just tea. I mean, it does mean tea, but um, chai tends to have cardamom in it, tends to be sweetened often with, um, with evaporated milk. And the chai that we're going to have here, uh, possibly, is very quite similar to the ones we have in India. For, for an extra 20p, they can throw in some saffron or some mint. Um, or some cinnamon. The place we're going to um, specialise, that's why I specialise in all sorts of, of, of chai, but we're going to have um, the Karak chai. Karak, of course, is Hindi for strong. So we're going to have a strong, a strong milky tea with maybe some saffron or something. Let's check it out. Chai Walla, here we are. This is Chai Walla. Let's go and check it out and, and see what all the fuss is about. This is meant to be one of the best places for breakfast. How's the chai? Lovely. Is this the chai? Nice. Let's try. Is, it, is, it, is it as good as the festival chai? Oh, I would say so. I'm not a connoisseur. Or well, is it as good as the chai we had in India? It's different. Mm, yeah, a strong, like, a strong cardamom me, taste. Yeah, it reminds me of the cha of more of festival. Mm, very nice. So what we have here, we have the Desi breakfast. Uh, this is a little omelette with tomato and chili. 
These are masala beans, so there's masala also in the omelette. And here we have a roti and a paratha. Uh, so uh, we, we thought we'd get one of each, so we could sort of try it. And this is a t- very typical um, Indian breakfast. Uh, when we were in Rishikesh, we had this pretty much every, every single day for breakfast. And also when we were in, in Haridwar on our first, our first, first week. So we're going to get a little bit of the a little bit of the roti. Or is that a paratha? I'm not sure now. Mm. That's really authentic. Yeah, so we, we were in India for two months, so we ate quite a lot of these. Because some, some restaurants, some hotels, this is all they had for breakfast. Yeah, so do it on this, um, on this interesting little sort of fish and chip style um, uh, a newspaper thing called British Independent, what's that say? British British Rule. British Independent British Rule Ends. And yeah, it's yeah. the Chaiwala Times. Largest circulation of any newspaper across London. Hmm. Not sure that's true, but there you go. Certainly circulating through our intestines right now. So the breakfast was 6.75 plus 25p for the tomatoes and 25p for the cheese, which were added to the omelette. Um, to all together to a total of £7.50. Yeah, that was really nice. That was really nice. Good start to the day. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of food that we're going to be eating today. Lots of different types of restaurants around here. You get the cheap and cheerful ones. You get the really posh ones, like the Royal Mahal. That's a very posh one. Um, as you can see, it even has a function and VIP area. Closed at the moment. Okay, so we are here at Midi, or Miadi. I'm not entirely sure how it's pronounced. This is a great Ethiopian and Eritrean restaurant. Um, they, they often, the two cuisines often get lumped in together. We, we, we've been to a couple before. It's currently closed, it will be open later on today. But because of the magic of technology, we're going to insert that little piece now. We're probably going to come in at the end of the day. I'm not going to eat probably because we, we'll be, we're going to be so stuffed. So we're definitely going to try the Habesha Lager. That's meant to be fantastic. Um, and we'll, te- we'll tell you a little bit about uh, Habesha, about where they get their water from. They draw these, these holes. Uh, anyway, I'll tell you all about it. So, just a little bit of magic. See you there now, future Tristan and Sharon. Ta-da! There we go. It is a magic. This is magic. This is, the, this is, see, we're, this is technologically magic. We are now at night time. We're just going to insert this little piece um, as we go into Midi or Miadi. We're going to insert this. Um, uh, our external microphone isn't working at the moment. You'll find out why later. Uh, we ran out of battery. Um, but uh, so we're using the internal mic now. That's why I'm shouting a little bit louder and the sound is slightly a little bit more different. But we're going to check this out now. And uh, we're going to try some Eritre- some Ethiopian beer. Okay, I think. This one. That one could be in a class of Heineken. This one. Right. Okay. This one. Uh, this one is made in Holland. In Holland. So we want one that's made in Ethiopia. Yeah. This is the Ethiopian one. Yeah. Then this one Ethiopian. This is in Eritrea, Samara. Okay. In that case, and uh, they're both four pounds. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll try. We'll try this one. Yeah. And we'll try, we'll try the Eritrean one. Yes, it's very Fan- fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so this one here is uh, this is Ethiopian, the same company that does the Habesha, the same Habesha. Yes, Habesha company. Habesha company. Yes. And this is not Habesha. This, this is, one is Asmara from as- Eritrea. This is from Eritrea. 
Melotti. Melotti. There are so many amazing beers from the Horn of Africa, and we've been lucky to sample many of them over the years. The Habesha Brewery is one of the best, in our opinion, founded and owned by a cooperative of several thousand Ethiopian people. The beer is brewed from water directly sourced in the Debra Birhen region, by 150 metre deep wells. Sadly, the restaurant didn't stock my favourite beer from the region, Habesha's Cold Gold, with its beautiful label showing off the traditional Tibet pattern but on the plus side we got to try two that we hadn't sampled before fantastic so uh, we're just going to try these two beers yes. and see which one we prefer and habe the word habesha means like openness peace togetherness is that right habesha is a, I mean the, the Ethiopians yeah they call themselves habesh habesh yeah. mm. okay so the beer name comes from comes that, from uh, comes from that for cool. Mm. It's delicious. This one is in Scandinavia. Yeah. This one is one of the organic beer which is uh, written in the whole Scandinavia. Uh huh. The Asmara beer. What is the number on it in alcohol? Five. Yeah, five. That's five. Mm. It doesn't taste like it. It tastes very no. light. You've got to be very careful with this yes. one. Yes, ma'am. Imported from Asmara in Eritrea, brewed with traditionally malted barley, finest hops, and purest mountain water. Very sort of cool and fresh. Mm. Five percent. And this is the this is the Ethiopian uh, one. The Ethiopian one. And they're very similar. Yeah. I don't think I could tell them apart. I think I prefer this one actually. Very hard to tell it's apart. Got a longer aftertaste. I prefer. I think I prefer the Eritrean it's one. It's a heavier body on this. A heavier. Yeah. It sort of lingers on. It's uvulaic. Which do you prefer? I don't know. I don't. I don't mind. But that's. It tastes lighter. Are they the equal percent? Five percent. Yeah. See, so that has a more uvulate. Like it goes to the back of the mouth and it lingers around. Yeah. Whereas that one disappears. It goes in your mouth and it's gone. Yeah. The flavor is gone. Whereas this one hangs around. So it depends what well, you that's like. That's great. For instance, if you're having a heavier, spicier meal, you might, if you want to have a fresh taste, or if you want to a strong yeah. taste to go with your spices. Yeah. They are different. Okay, so here we are, right next to Miadi. <coughs> uh, we are at the Khalsa Center Tuting Gurudwara. Now, Gurudwara means door to the Guru. And uh, this is, uh, well, if you know your flags, every Gurudwara has this flag outside it. It's a triangular flag of the Sikh. The, and that symbol is known as the Nishan Sahib. So this is a place for prayer, but it is open to everyone of any religion or indeed of no religion. Um, and inside there is something called a langar. Langar, L-A-N-G-A-R. Every Gurudwara has to have a langar. And the langar is basically a kitchen. And it's a free kitchen. It's a kitchen, again, I mean, they're completely non-judgmental. Homeless people can go in there and have something to eat. Yeah. They'll be sitting amongst people who are praying and also eating. Everyone, uh, everyone gets fed. Everyone yeah. gets fed if they have enough. And, and all, all different religions. And as I said, they're, they're, not, they're, not, they're, non, they're non-judgmental in there. Uh, this is uh, one, of the, one of the beautiful things about the Sikh community. Um, and there's lots of really interesting things about the Sikhs and how they live, the, their traditions, what they wear, the five Ks. We're going to be telling you about the five Ks in a moment. And obviously, uh, this, this place is open every day. If you come on days like Diwali, it's really, really buzzing. Lots and lots and lots of um, people uh, turning up. So the other thing that, um, that every single Gurudwara has is a copy of their holy book, the Guru Granth Sahib. And that's placed on top of a, on top of a, um, a throne called a tack hat. Um, and basically, the, that is their holy book. So the Guru sings uh, ragas um, which are interpreting so various passages. Uh, he's, uh, he's there by the tack hat, interpreting various passages of their book. Let's go inside. <coughs> and maybe speak to someone. This is, so we've had to uh, put something on our heads. We are doing a vlog all about all about um, about tooting, and we we're just explaining outside about the langar and about the traditions and and um, the ragas. What, what time would people come to see that? Well, He's reading a book at the moment. People keep on come and visit and go. 
So, so would it be okay to go in there and see yeah, that? You can, go, you can see inside. That's fantastic. Yeah. And, and you have a, the langar? Yeah. That's open on every day at 7 o'clock? Yeah. And uh, is that every day at 7 or only on Saturdays? No, any time you can have it. So you have the langar is the outside there. You can go and sit and eat. That's fantastic. Um, and also, I just wanted to find uh, uh, to explain to our viewers about the five Ks, yes. about the, 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 the five pillars, the, the, the cutting of the hair, uh, or you never cut the hair or the beard, um, and the comb, um, and, um, well, and, 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 and and the little sword as well. Um, that was given by our tenth guru when he, he, he created the Sikhism. On 1699, 16 on 13th of April, it was a Vesaki, he, he said every Sikh should wear a comb in his hair, he should have a five case, case first case is a case, the hairs, yeah. he should not cut it because it's a gift from the Lord, Yeah. so whatever you have from the Lord, it's a gift, you should yeah. not cut it, Yeah. so that's, that's the first one, and the second one is a comb, it's called Kanga. Uh, he's given a small comb so that you should clean it every day and comb your hairs. Yes. If you don't clean your gay hairs, so your hairs get dirty, so you do not come to worship. When you come to the Lord, you must come clean. Yes. With a clean heart and clean, clean body. Yeah. And then he's given you a bamboo, it's called kara. Kara is where is worn by each Sikh. Yeah. He's a, is is it, 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 it tells you not to do bad things. You can meditate any time. Yeah. It's no time for to that. You have to meditate that time, not meditate. And the, the the fifth one is the karpan, which is to purify the food when you before you eat it, you give it to the Lord and you you present it to Him, and then you you purify the food by giving the Lord and the, and and the, the karpan is is used to purify the food and then you serve the food to everybody or for charge. The kirpan, yeah. um, uh, how, how is that, how, it's like travel restrictions and stuff like that, flights and things like that, um, how... What do you mean? Uh, bec no, because obviously carrying a blade on the flights and things like that, has there been a problem? In the plane? Yes. No. As so a, as you can carry about four inch, a, a small kirpan is allowed to be worn on, on the plane anywhere, any in the buildings anywhere, but the big one did not allow you. It's, it's, yeah. it's a, because it is to purify your food, you don't need a very big one. No, I know, yeah, I know. And the f this fifth one was a short, short we wear, which is called kashara, which is long up to our knee. Yeah. And, and he says, Lord says, I give you a short, which is a long, up, long up to your knee. Whether you have a trouser or you don't have a trouser, you can wear that one. You can, and it's called kacha, kushara. And it, this is the five case given by our ten guru. And he says, on top of that, I give you a turban. A turban. A Sikh will wear a turban. He can be recognized anywhere in the world, wherever he's standing. Yeah. Okay. It's really, really interesting. Um, and, 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 and how, how many? I mean, all, all, I mean, to all Sikhs. We got ten gurus. Yes. The fi the eleventh guru is the living Lord. Yeah. This is a holy book written by our ten gurus. All the all the book is written by our ten gurus. It tells us how to live and how what any questions we got we can get it out of the book. Yeah. They he called Guru Granth Sahib Ji. It's a living law. Yeah. Which is uh, he's got his own bedroom when he's. He comes in the morning when we bring him down, and then in the evening we put him back in the bed. So that's how he's, he's kept. Okay. And he's kept clean. He got 1430 pages. Okay. The flag you're talking about outside is called Nishan Sai. Nishan Sai. Nishan Sai yeah. means it's a mark of the temple. Wherever he's in the temple, he must have a, a flag it's called Nishan Sai. Yeah. So yes. all the male people, they, their name end with Singh. Singh. But uh, the women, their name and the core. Core. So you can recognize the person who is coming, whether he's a male or a female, by the name only. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting. We sit, we sit below the Lord with folding legs. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. We fold the legs so you can balance. When you sit, you can balance with your legs. Yes. If you put your legs straight, you cannot sit straight. You fell down. Yes. No, that's true. Whatever you do. Yeah. If you fold your legs and sit down, you can meditate and sit down as long as you feel like. 
Yeah. And you sit separately, women one side and men one side. So you don't tease each other, don't look at each other. You can put your clean, clean mind yes. to meditate. Right. Uh, we give a small token called prashad. Yes. Everybody comes to Gurdwara. It's, it's made of samalina, butter, sugar, water, and a little prayer. One prayer is done so that it can be made a prashad. Yes. It's, a, it's, pure, it's a pure thing which is a blessing of the Lord. Yeah. We come to the Gurdwara every day. Anybody want to put in the, the, the donation box there, they go in front of the Lord and they bow, bow themselves in front of Him. So they say, please gi forgive us. Forgive our sins and bless us, so so we can do something good. That's why you come to to the temple to to go in properly. Okay. Right. Thank so you. Anything else? No, that's all. We'll, we'll go in and do that now. Unfortunately, our camera decided not to work when we entered the Dabar Sahib to see the Kirtan being chanted from the Guru's Granth Sahib. But we have found some footage that someone else recorded on another day. <laughs> The full link to the original video can be found in the YouTube description. However, before we left, we did manage to grab something to eat in the langar, or kitchen. We're just about to have some dal, which is some lentils. And uh, this is free, obviously. This is all, this is all um, funded with donations, etc. So what's it like? Mm. It has onion in it. I know, I can't eat onion. Mm. So they don't have that restriction? No, they don't. The, the Jains do, um, and the Hare Krishnas do, but the, uh, hi, the hi. Sikhs... Certain Hindus. The Sikhs can eat uh, onion, unfortunately. Not unfortunately for me. That makes the difference. I've got, some, I've got some things to nibble. I won't go hungry. Mm. Now, that whole area of the Gurudwara, and every Gurudwara has to have, obviously, it's, apart from a langar, which is a kitchen, that area where the, where the guru sits, um, that whole area is called the Darbar Sahib. And, um, and it's quite, well, I mean, I, Darbar Sahib is, of course, the name of probably the holiest of holy places for the Sikh community in Amritsar. Um, there's a picture of it now on your screen, but I'm sure you've seen it on countless documentaries. Uh, absolutely beautiful. That is the Darbar Sahib. Uh, but every Gurudwara has to have a Darbar Sahib. <laughs> it's very interesting what Satchpal was saying earlier um, uh, about the Kirpan. So as I was saying, um, obviously since uh, flights have become stricter with what you bring on, on board, um, a special dispensation has had to be made to the Sikh community allowing them to bring their blades. Um, they, have a, they, they, they carry a much smaller blade when they go flying. Every, every country allows Sikh people to carry this blade on flights, apart from the United States. They're very, very strict about it. Uh, so, um, flights from Canada, for example, all domestic and international flights, uh, they can carry the blade on them, but not to flights to the USA. Even the small ones they don't allow, uh, which is a real problem. As for carrying the kirpan, um, the only countries sort of in Europe that have placed real restrictions, funny enough, are Denmark and Sweden. Uh, they only allow you to carry um, a, a, a blade if it's a tool for work. And um, unfortunately, uh, they did not see that the Sikh community, were you, the, the religious reasons, was, uh, was, was, was a tool. Um, so they, uh, they, you, can't, you are allowed to have uh, blades of under six centimetres in Sweden and Denmark, uh, but it's not the big long blade that uh, you can wear here in this country. In fact, even in the London Olympics 2012, all the stewards were told that, 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 that you know, I mean, I couldn't even bring, when I went to the ice hockey, I couldn't even bring my selfie stick in. Uh, but uh, if you are a member of the Sikh community, you can bring your, your, your curved sword. Um, and in fact, uh, all the stewards were told that. In fact, any football match as well in the country. Uh, the problem is, not every steward knows that. So, I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure if you go to a game at Crystal Palace, I'm sure it'll raise a few eyebrows among some of the stewards. They're not all necessarily going to know 
the intricacies of the rules uh, regarding the um, permission towards the Sikh community to carry the kirpan. Okay, so now let's move on to the next place. Um, as you saw there, um, I, lab- I gave a little donation. Um, so, uh, talking of donations, we always are on the lookout for donations. We have a Patreon account. You could be our patron. We've just got a lovely patron just, just the other day. Another new patron. Fantastic. You'll see all, all your names at the end uh, of this video. If you want to support us financially, there are other ways you can support us. Share this video. We are so close to reaching monetization uh, and getting um, all the subscribers. It doesn't cost you a penny to subscribe and certainly doesn't cost you anything to, to, to just share this on your social media. Share it to groups on Facebook. Share it to friends on Twitter. Share, share, share. Comment in the comments below because YouTube really like that. It shows that we're interacting with people, that we're an interesting channel. We're an educational channel. We are an educational channel. You just learned something there today, didn't you? Um, and also you can you can uh, do all the usual, the likes, the um, the uh, what other things do we do? Likes, shares. Not a hell of a lot, apparently. You know, you know by now. There's all buttons all over the screen. Just do it. Subscribe, like, share, enjoy, integrate. Let's see what's next. Oh boy. Yes, well, we're not going far. This is so much, there's so much in the street. They're one of the very famous sons of Tutti, who is probably, probably this country's favourite snooker player, is Jimmy White, Sir Jimmy White. Is he a sir? Is he a sir, Jimmy White? I'm not sure. If he's not a sir, he should be, probably. Um, anyway, so Jimmy White. Now, this... It's going to come down here. So this is a very, very famous uh, Stuga Hall. Opened in 1921 um, as a billiards hall. Um, and it is here where the young Jimmy White, uh, from, who is from Tooting, came with his dad and played um, and, and fell in love with the game. Um, and um, he used to come here with, with another local and play every day with Tony Mayo. Um, and back then this club was called Zans, Z-A-N-S. Um, it's uh, fairly reasonably priced to join. I think it's about a tenner or so a year. Um, and then you pay per the hour to use the table, which I think is £8 an hour. Um, you can bring guests in and stuff like that. They have a very late licence. I think it's till 2am, but I think it used to be 24 hours. Maybe we'll ask them inside. Anyway, come and carry on. Let's There we go, Jimmy White. <laughs> yes, so um, it used to be open 24 hours, it's now only open until 2 a.m. Sure. Uh, but it is open every day of the year, including Christmas Day and New Year's Day. Excellent. Never stops. There's always time for snooker. Okay. Lovely cherry tree. Oh, wait, wait. Outside Tesco's. Hey, why pay for it? I know. But it's not even fully ripe yet. I know, that's the style. That's amazing. Wow. They should come out and pick this thing. That's as good as you get in Spain. And it's still a month away from being ready. Well, I'm no. gonna, not even actually. Well, oh. What are we now, late June? Yeah. Yeah, anyway. So Holy we're man. just going to go now into Tesco's. Let's go, let's go get our ladder from the house. Look at how full it is. The branches are so heavy. Yeah. So, so we're not going to go to Tesco's. Sure, sure. We're going to go and get something to drink. 
But we're not going to have it now, we're going to have it later. Well, maybe that one's probably a little past. It. Nah, it's been in the street. We're we going to have it later because um, one, of the, one of the restaurants we're going to later is a bring your own. So let's uh, grab some booze. Nice. I want the tree, that's what I want. That is, that's productive. It's been quite warm and there's been lots of, a uh, lot of moisture. So, hey, th this tree is doing just fine. <sighs> I do like a loquat, or nispero, as it's called in Spanish. I think we've lost Sharon in the food shop. Sharon? Okay, we, 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 we go, we're going to a lot of shopping. Okay. We can come back here later. I had to rescue her, because now we are going to talk a little bit about puja. Now, puja is something that the, the Hindus and the Sikhs do. Um, and it's a blessing to the deities. But obviously, in the case of um, the Hindus, uh, it's uh, lots and lots of uh, various deities. And you offer them puja. Now, we are now going to a place that calls itself Puja. We went to Puja, by the way, when we were in India. A uh, fantastic little fire ceremony by the Ganges in Haridwar. Um, but we're now going to Puja here, which is probably London's, one of London's most famous uh, sweet shops. And, uh, and blessable food, apparently. Yes, it's a lot more expensive than, um, than the ones you get in East End, around Allgate. But um it's um it's really well known so let's maybe have a little look and let's keep the camera rolling anything you particularly want <laughs> so in there, um, <coughs> we bought some no onion uh, pecoras. Are they pecoras or samosas? Samosa, I thought you said. Triangular, that's a yeah. samosa. Okay, so they had a special no onion samosa in there. So um, people who like me cannot eat onion do take note. Who should do no onion samosas? You have to ask for them. Uh, they had the special like little section there um, saying no onion samosas, and we've got a little sweet as well. So here we go. Mixed vegetables and potatoes. Oh, I didn't get much of the filling. Yeah. Oh, too hot. Oh. Oh. Three of these per pound. Really reasonable, actually. Mm. That is good. Mm. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's got a kick to it. Oh. Oh, hey, 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 hey. This is proper street food, isn't it? There you go. We're like Dale, Dale Phillips. That Scottish guy. The Scottish YouTuber. Don't be drunk. Huh? Name dropper. Oh, that's what that's what YouTubers do. Okay. They name drop other YouTubers. Might want to do a collaboration one day. That's also what I do. Uh -huh. I don't know. Next time you're in London, you want to do a collab with us? Go up and down the streets here and try the food. Give us a shout. We got a big bill coming. Yeah, well, good luck with that. Oh. oh. I'm trying to get the crumbs. Here, come into the light. 
That's my boy. There you go. Oh, wow. Oh, a lot of these, a little sweets. I'm not, I think it's a coconut. Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh, I know what these are. Eat it all. No. <coughs> oh, sir, we've got a meal coming. Oh, that is about as. Oh, oh. Let's make it. Oh. Okay, let's go to the next place. Uh, I think it's just around the corner. Let's get the crumb. Yeah, so what's, what's really nice about that little place is it's co-owned by a Muslim and a Hindu person, uh, which is really nice. It's, it's dead. Oh, no. It looks dead to me. Well, we were going to go to Little India. Well, not anymore. According to Google, it's still open. Okay. That looks just like where I want to go. This place is the place to go for incense, Especially rope incense. Oh, damn. They're closed. Yeah. I don't believe it. <laughs> Can I say what time? What, are, they, are, they, are they closing forever? It looks like it, unless they found a body in there and they're digging it up. That looks like it's uh, either one or the other, but. Oh no! No incense for me today. Except oh, no, no. That we go somewhere else. No, we, we're going to we're going to the market later. Probably that'll probably be in, that might be in the next episode. Oh. But we'll but we'll be today Oops. but it's not the same I mean that place is, is legendary not legendary enough apparently it is a place to go if you want to buy puja uh, ah. what what ah and it's India look oh, it, lives. it lives it lives we're going in there we're going in there fantastic Oh, it's, it lives. So that they must have moved, or maybe that's an old place. Tristan, it's gorgeous. It's not expensive. There's oh, the Kali, 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 and she's metal. Do you hang on to that thing? I gotta get my oh, and the and the, the Shiva, the Lingam and. This is a good one. I'm just, I need my glasses. This is a dangerous place. It is. And, and it does say, please do not play with the religious items. We are not playing with the religious items. They're not action figures, they're to be. Should we get a little basket? Yes. I think we're going to need a basket. I think we? we're going to need a basket. Oh dear, I shouldn't have said that, should I? Let's find a, let's find a, find a basket. Here's a basket. This is dangerous. There we go. She's modestly covered, but she has her, all of her parts. She's got the, the more multi-hand one. How much is it? Uh, 30, 28. 28? Yeah, that's not unreasonable for that, but at the same but time... But we, we got one in, in, in Dreisel there for, for less than that, and it was it's hundreds yard. of years old. Well, I don't think it's hundreds. That's for, that's for burning. You put the, the coal in the bottom. Oh, we found it. So that's, you light the cup, and the cup burns. Okay? Okay, how much is it? Uh, four ninety nine. You probably get more than one, but that's that's for our, and then you don't need the discs. But the discs you need for these. Do, there's that small. What's that? Yeah, read the read the writing and see. It's six rupees. Well, not here it is. It? It's one pound. Six rupees is seven p, isn't it? Yes. Seven p to one pound. Okay, well fair Someone enough. Someone has to bring it. Someone has to bring it. When does it change from As if I picking don't. up here's, to here's, playing? I don't know what that means. Well, it says you want to play with the religious items and... I don't know, but I'm allowed to check them out. There's Kali again. Okay. That one will be a little less expensive, but she's standing on... Stepping on um, her husband. That's when he fine. wakes her up. He wakes her up, that that's... Uh, Kali's husband. Kali is... Is that... And then, and she cuts his head off? Or? No, no. She, uh, she accidentally steps on him because she's got... She's in with the demons. And, and, and whose head does she carry? That's one of the demons. They, m the blood mustn't touch the floor or they grow again. Is she the one with the cobra as well? No. No. That's... That's, that's the chief as well. See? He's got the cobra. There. Where? 
there. All right, so she does have a cobra. No, she, he, she doesn't. He does. That's he her has. Husband. Her husband has a cobra. Yeah, that's Shiva. Okay, that's Shiva. So All oh, right. What happens is he, she. The only thing that brings her out of her trance is when she 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 walks over his body and then snaps out of it and realizes what she's done and oh. goes like, oh, what, what have I done? That's some dupe here. Do you want some dupe? Oh, we have lots of dupe. Get some of that. Is that one pound fifty? There's ninety. Nandi, oh yes. Let's Miss Shiva again. There's Shiva Nandi. Nandi, Nandi the bull. Remember the, the Shiva Pachayat, the ones that were And here is Ganesh. That's a particularly nice Hanuman. Yes. That's 60 Six, pounds. 60. But, but it's very nice. Good casting. And, you know, that is very clear. Again, you get what you pay for. 250. Yeah. Oh, there's Kali again. And looking resplendent. Yep. She's my favorite. 120. Yeah. Welch. Well, I think... Today is not the day for buying that sort of size. We don't have the room for it anyway. Oh, we've got plenty of them already. W well, we have, we don't have plenty of them. Actually, I'm just might, we may as well show you now what our little cabinet of curiosities uh, that we have uh, on display of various bits and pieces that we've bought on, on our travels. Mm. Some things are quite well priced. I mean, that is two pound eighty nine. It's obviously some kind of um, prasad. Maybe I'm not sure. Something, some, something to offer, or something. It's, it's something that you hang a hang around the neck of your favourite cow, maybe. Um, and here, look at these. These are nice. He's actually good value for for London. That's eighteen ninety nine. And you've got the burners here as well. This one's twelve ninety nine. That's the round, the, the round bottom one. Yeah, those things over there—they're called a karahi, and the karahi is quite, it's quite similar to a wok, only um, it's a flatter bottom, um, and you make some amazing food with the karahi. In fact, we're going to be eating a little bit later very very soon in fact in this episode in somewhere that specializes in karahi dishes um really looking forward to that uh, i'm going to be very very i'm not going to be very hungry after that and um, we've got more food to eat later on so i might get some incense and see <laughs> yeah. It's nice and light though. How much is that one? 25 pounds. We know where they are. We can always think about it. Uh, yeah. I know, I know. It's so much cheaper in India. I know that, but we're not it's not so cheap. To go to India. Oh, lovely. We thought you would close. Yeah, what's from the, there little, the other shop called Little India, which is closed? Is that also yeah, yours? Are you moving? Are you moving there? Yeah, no, we are here since 40 years. Uh -huh. Restaurant now. That's ah, the restaurant now. Yeah. 14 pounds. 14 pounds for all of that. Well, and, and this that's actually good price. value. That's good value for London. But that's good value. It's been there for for India, it's a horrendous value, but there again, I have to bring it over. Yep. Now, oh, that's good yeah, value. Look at two okay. pomegranates for a pound. Nice. Just in case we don't come back, I might get some Luquat, some Nispiro. Okay. Here we go. Look what, these spin off, 5 a kilo. Oh, that's £1.50 a kilo. They, these ones look really, really... But the rotty ones are the best. These are really rotty though. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's like for the animals. I'm just going to buy these four these spin off. These chilies look nice, don't they? Yeah, those are the type that will, you know, you enjoy for the second time. So I will get some of these chilies as well for later. Money 
but Turkish is so good. What's this? Chana. It only has chickpea. No, there's no onion in there. I will go to the gate. Okay, and this as well then. So how much were the four Nisperos? Uh, Nispero come to 132. 132 for four? Yeah. 599 kilo. Wow, okay. One pound 32 for four very sorry looking well, loquats. I could have bought that big bag for one pound 50, but they did look really yeah, ropey. I've them all, all day to get rid of them. But I probably would have found more than four worth. Oh. I don't really have much taste. Oh, bro. No, no thanks. Well, I think that that was worth £1.32 divided by 4 is um, 33p. Definitely not worth 33p. Well, at least it, it gets one of your five a day if you eat those. But things. it's the first one I've had in years. And I do like myself a loquat, one of my favourite foods. Put that in the bag for later. Yeah. Hey, you've been here for over 10 years, is that right? More than 10 years, about 18 years a year. 18 years. Are we doing a vlog? We're doing a vlog called Love Your London. It's all about shooting. Right, right. Uh, I'll give you my card. Oh, nice. Do you mind being on camera? No problem, okay. it doesn't make a difference. Uh, so, so, so you've been selling, you just sell mangoes? Just mangoes. From yeah. Afghanistan? No, from Pakistan. From Pakistan. Oh, so, yes. so I'm sorry, I thought it was uh, Afghan. Um, and you're always from, Af always from Pakistan? Yeah, yeah, ones. yeah, always from Pakistan, yeah. And um, and you're very famous, I think. You're, yeah. you, you, I've been told you're very famous. Thank so you. So, what uh, what what mangoes do you recommend? Uh, we got uh, Sindri, Ch Rator, Chosa. We got a lot of mangoes here. Uh, how much is each mango? Uh, different different mangoes, different prices. Six pound, seven pound, twelve, and different prices, different size. Starting from six to twenty-five. Six to yes, right. They're all the same quality, are they? Or different variety. So what's, the, so what's the difference between fresh mango? Yeah, this one this one is a seven pound a box. And you get four in a box? Four in a box, Chosa. And this one? This is four in a box, Sindri. It's a 6.50 a box. So you've got two boxes for 35 pounds. Yes, please. Uh, this is three kg, yeah, all the prices. Or three boxes of the honey mango for 20 pounds. Yes, please. Okay. All right. So Thank we'll you very much. meal and come back. Okay, so we are now going to eat. Of course we are. Uh, we're going to try this place here, Mirch Masala, another Indian restaurant. Actually, I, I, it's not an Indian restaurant, it's a Pakistani restaurant. Um, what I should actually explain is here in the United Kingdom, uh, when we refer to Indian restaurants, um, they may be Pakistani restaurants, they may be Bangladeshi restaurants, no, they may be Indian restaurants. No offences caused. The restaurants themselves, even on Brick Lane, the Bangladeshi restaurants call themselves Indian restaurants. Now this place here, Mirch Masala, uh, is a Pakistani restaurant. It specialises in Karachi dishes. And a Karachi is that wok-like thing that we just saw in that little India shop. It's like a wok made from steel or iron, but with a, a, flat, a flat bottom. Um, now, the reason why we're coming here is this is Supposedly, well it is not supposedly, he said it himself, this is Sadiq Khan's favourite restaurant. Uh, Sadiq Khan was uh, the MP here in Tooting, he was born here, he is now the current Mayor of London. Uh, he said, yeah, there's quite a lot of restaurants around Tooting that he says are his favourite. Uh, but this is the one that cropped up most often in interviews. Um, so we're going to check it out, we're going to try a couple of the dishes that uh, he likes as well. I believe their sizzling prawns are meant to be really good and, uh, and a few other things. Um, but we're going to try that. The name Mirch Masala actually means hot spice. It means hot spice in Hindi. Um, and um, film buffs may actually re uh, recognise the name because um, there's a very famous film starring Smriti Patil um, who uh, she ha is amazing in this film. In fact, Forbes magazine listed it one of the 25 best acting performances in Indian cinema. Uh, do check it out. Um, Mirch Masala, hot spice. Anyway, let's go and check out and eat some food. My name is Ali. Ali, yeah. and you're the you're the owner or the no, uh, I'm the manager. The manager of the restaurant, um, and of course, this is Sadi Khan's favorite restaurant. So he yeah, said yes, in, yes. in things. And uh, how? When's the last time he came here to eat? Uh, like almost like three months ago. Three months ago, yeah. right? So I, I don't come here like every day. Yeah. I come only for for the weekends, and we have like different managers for different days. Okay. Yeah. So generally, if you can stand a spoon in a milkshake, it's probably going to be pretty good. Well. 
a lassie, if you can stand the straw in it, it's going to be pretty good. The parotid ducts, they kicked in right away. Yum. This is a complimentary mango lassie. Mm. Very nice. Ah, we have some. Not at all. Thank you, Ali. Mango chutney and some poppadoms. Fantastic. I must say, it's quite different to the last lassi I had, which was in Jaisal Mare. And there's a reason if, for that. If you ever go to Jaisal Mare, do be careful when you're having a lassi that you. Oh, do check the ingredients first. Anyway, that is very, very nice. Wow, that is a lovely lassi, isn't it? Mm. Mm. That's delicious. Another member of staff, Sana, then came out to show us that Sadiq Khan is not the only politician to grace the tables of Mirch Masala, and showed us a recent photo on her phone of Sajid Javid with the owner. As someone who would never have voted for the Tories in a million years, I was less impressed by that. For those who don't know, Sajid Javid used to be the Home Secretary before becoming the Chancellor of the Exchequer, and then, at the time of filming this episode, the Secretary of State for Health and Social Care. Of course, if you've been keeping up with the news, you will know that a few days ago he resigned from this position. Who knows what he will be by the time you watch this episode. Politi politically wise, uh, we are left leaning, so we prefer Sadiq Khan of the two. Um, and we're eating Sadiq Khan's favourite meals uh, in a moment. The sizzling garlic prawns and the paneer tikka, uh, which is neither of them have onion. Uh, really looking forward to this. This is uh, going to be a treat. How the heck are we going to eat any more after this? Okay. Oh, and by the way, um, as you can see, uh, drinking drinking Jack Daniels and Coke, uh, which we bought in Tesco's earlier, is bring your own bottle. A lot of the restaurants around here don't have an alcohol license, um, especially the Pakistani one, ones. Mixed uh, community. But they all, or pretty much all of them, um, are perfectly happy for you to bring your own drink in from the local supermarket. So that actually works out cheaper. No, I'm not check complaining. First. Check in advance. Make yeah, always check in advance. If but, you um, pull out a big bottle of whiskey, it'll be appreciated. That'd be fine. I mean, just check on their website. Not if it's a, not a BYOB. Not if it's a, yeah, but the, the ones that aren't BYOB normally yeah. have their own bar. Okay, look at these are the poppadom. So we're going to put some mango chutney. Oh, man. Some chili. Some raita. And I'm going to stuff it all in my mouth. And on the table, apparently. There we go. Oh, look at this. The garlic prawns just turned up. Can you hold that while I, while I eat yeah, the... Yeah, oh my gosh. Hang on. Right. Here we go. Ah! Mmm. 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 Now, I want you to... I'll hold this while you start eating the, the sizzling. Garlic prawns. Oh boy. Yeah, there's enough oil on this thing to uh, take care of our energy needs for the next six or seven months. Watch out for your clothes. So, Sadiq, what do you think of Sadiq Khan's favorite meal? Or favorite starter? I've never had anything quite like that before. My mouth is still full. Very coriandery, and there's a nice oily garlicness to it. That's what I like. Uh, by all means, tuck in before it gets cold. I suspect it's not as nice cold. Mm. Eating out of the table plate. Oh. Very mild. Very garlicky, it is no? It's garlicky and mild. Mm. Very oily. Yeah. Mm. They like their oil. Oh, nice. They like their oil when mm. they make these. That yeah, is very nice. Because prawn, you know? You very know? nice prawn. It's their version of garlic butter shrimp, if you will. That's yeah. what it reminds me of. But it's got a lot more coriander in it. Mm. And there's, a, there's another constellation of, of flavors in there. Yeah, very nice. doesn't like garlic butter shrimp. Hello. Oh, hello. And here really? we are, the paneer. Paneer tikka. Yeah. Whoa, thank you. Oh, that's no, that's all, thank you. Fantastic. Ooh. Okay, let's try this. You go first. Can I try this first? Mmm. Yeah. Mmm. Love it. Looks like it's just paneer cheese. Mm. Think halloumi, but a little bit more um, 
a little, a little softer. Nice and smoky and hot. Yeah, very, very, very mm. smoky. And um, with the oh, nice chilies nice in fact, like it. it's in got fact, a salty I'm gonna, I'm gonna add even more chili to it. Yeah, very flavorful. Mm. Well, we're gonna be stuffed at the end of this. So we're doing another three episodes today. Good thing I didn't eat anything for a while. Hey. Yes, let's see the kitchen. Can I? So we're gonna have a look at the kitchen. Okay, this is where all the action happens. Yeah? Hello. Making kebabs. Hello. Hi there. Yeah, just making. Hello. Just doing a vlog. Looks amazing. Looks amazing. All this. Wow. Yeah? Fantastic. Oh, the smell is amazing. Thank you. Ten pounds. Oh no, they just charged us for the garlic prawns. Well, that was really nice. I mean, uh, that was just ten pounds. We bought our own drinks, obviously, so that didn't cost anything. I see. They gave. We've just charged us for the garlic prawns. They gave us the poppadoms. The, the the mango lassies and the cheese paneer for free. That's uh, that's because we're vloggers, or you never know. We're, we're we're making it. Well, it's just because we're so good looking. Mwah, that's true, and it's also because we're becoming an established channel. Thanks to people like you, we're almost reached our 1,000 subscribers. Um, we'll be able to monetize soon, and then the world is our oyster or our paneer. See you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Cool. Let's go. Tristan, come on. Oh, nice. Jesus, I was wondering why the hell that thing tastes so funny. Next time on Love Your London, we continue down the A24 when Upper Tooting Road becomes Tooting High Street. We'll be visiting not one but two markets, both adjacent to one another. There'll be banter. There'll be pubs. Till next time. From Acton Town to Wimbledon, from Brixton to beyond. Love your London. Have a banana.